Hello and welcome to Into Wine's Tasting Room. I'm your host, Lisa Colenda. Today we're at Yield, San Francisco's first and only organic wine bar. The tasting theme for today is organic wines under $30. This is the 2005 Dragon's Hollow Chardonnay from the Heilan Mountain Range in China. It retails for $13, and this is another broadband line. Yeah, and actually for full disclosure, I'm a 50% owner of this um, winery, Dragon's Hollow. And so I'm probably not going to say too much about it. Most Chinese wines are completely undrinkable. They're the fifth or sixth largest wine producer in the world, but most of the wines are really, really disgusting. Um, however, there are a couple of white, good wine producers. Um, one of them is called Grace Family, but they can't, Grace, but they can't export to America because this is a winery in California called Grace. Um, and this is the only other, um, what I would consider drinkable wine in China at the moment. But believe me, it's the wave that's going to come because they'll realize that they have to improve their wines for the export market and they will improve it and just maybe they can make everything else for that. So, What's the, the climate like? What the, what's the region like? This I know nothing about it. <clears throat> so this is just um, on the Inner Mongolia border in China. Okay. Um, and it's exactly the same latitude of parallel as uh, Napa Valley. Okay. So the, um, it's desert um, with beautiful mountains. Um, it's, so it's very, very dry. Very, 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 very dry in the summer. So hot in the summer that there are no pests, so it's, or no pesticides are needed. Mm -hmm. And so cold in the winter that um, they have to lay the vines down and lattice them and cover them in 10, ten inches of sand. And all of this is done by hand. It's labor is very inexpensive now. It's a Muslim, <coughs> autonomous Muslim region. So all the grape growers have these beautiful um, red scarves on, um, but they do drink. It seems. <laughs> uh, and think. is the red scarf where you get the idea for this? Well, medallion? there is a, a, a coin on here, and the reason for that is because in this region of China, um, they it's the very first place there was ever a mint in China. So the first coins were produced in this region of China many, many centuries ago. And China's been making wines for centuries and centuries. Uh, it went out of product, production for a while, but um, recently came back when. I think it was Chairman Mao who actually was seen drinking on wine on, on um, television and toasting with wine, and then that made wine very acceptable in China. <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, 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 I'm tempted to be condescending, but it's fact. It, 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 it adds to the price. Marvelous. And it's a, a very congratulable Chardonnay. I know it was. Do they have their own uh, bed? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's on it. It's on it. You don't get that sort of spiciness you get with that. Uh, yeah. You could you couldn't make a, a wine aged in barrels for thirteen dollars a bottle these days. Two barrels are so a little powder in that. Well you could use chips and oak chips and things like that. But we too I personally quite enjoy Sauvignon Blanc style wines and um, uh, so I think an unoaked Chardonnay is a little bit Sauvignon Blanc ish. I hope this is not too facetious, but some years ago, I've been writing for the Academy of for 30 years, and one of my monthly articles I suggested a very good idea about that, that you have tea bags, and you put the oak chips in the tea bags, and you dunk them, <laughs> dunk them <laughs> wine, so you will have a lot of oak or no oak at all. And I, since then, this actually is being done. Like one wine somewhere. Yeah, oh, great. yeah. Chris, what do you think of this one? I think that, like, first of all, the uniqueness quality is from a region that probably no, not many people have had a wine from China. Um, and the price is great. It's very, it's it's good for the fact that it's different and that the price is great and also the wine is, is just fine. I mean, there's no, there's no there's no flaws with it. It's got fruit. I mean, it's a little... If I was given this blood, I wouldn't have the foggy stuff there. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't have all this character. It doesn't have tons of character, but... At the same time, I think it's it's a good wine. The yeah. color's correct. But the color's fine. great. There's nothing like there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I think 
Um, but I, when we were launching this wine, it's only been available in the US since May. Yeah. And um, we went around Tennessee to all the top retailers there, and we bought it blind and said, you know, we don't want you to, um, all we want you to tell us is if you like it and what you think it's worth. And if you want to try and guess where it's from, you can, but that's not the only way to guess. And they all guessed um, $12.99, which is $13, all of them. And they all said they liked it. And of course, no one had a clue where it was from when they started guessing. It was all over the map. Yeah, there's no way. I would say maybe some kind of small Spanish region. I mean, yeah. that would be my, my best guess. And also, because it's unknown, not many of them guessed it was Chardonnay. They were yeah, I would think. The only area or something. Are like Chinese restaurants taking this? No, actually, what, what we found is we thought that obviously Chinese restaurants would buy it, but what we found is that the people who are really buying it are the wine bars, the, the more progressive um, restaurants that want to have the latest That's okay. thing. Um, and you know, America is an incredibly intellectual um, wine consuming nation, and they always want to discover new things. And this is the, the newest thing on the block, so it's, it's having a lot of su success for that reason. Definitely. We um, recently picked up a wine um, from Japan, and it's selling you know, fabulously. So it's yeah. definitely something people are looking for. Something other than California and French wines yes. as options, especially also the price. Yeah, yes. Can be served by the glass in most restaurants. So. What's the other thing about um, the world of wine? Everybody in the world is making wine, but fortunately, they have a lot of wine drinkers. I mean, there's an explosion of uh, consumption wine in the world. And the only you know, too, of course. Do you think that um, China is the fifth biggest wine producing country in the world, but they're drinking it all themselves? It's not really the export. I would have never guessed that. Wine consumption is huge. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, I'll tell you where else wine consumption is huge, and that's here on the set of IntoWine.com, where we're tasting the Dragon's Hollow 2005 Chardonnay. It's from the Heilan Mountain Range of China. That's right, I said China. And it retails for $13. This is a broadband wine. You can read more about it at IntoWine.com. I'll drink to that.